guys ready for another episode of below the iceberg this is the one and only podcast where we talk to normal people just like you and i but they have made more than one million dollars through just one funnel all using the click funnel software yes that is right one million dollars through just one funnel and that is what you call the two comma club now in our guest interviews you'll hear how they did it and what was their driving force behind them whether you're a small business owner an entrepreneur or just starting out these million dollar entrepreneurs will give away their secrets on how they made it into such successful companies in the ClickFunnels community to achieve the two comma club is a goal of many many people and in today's episode i'm really excited to be talking with josh rhodes and we will be discussing Josh's journey to building his million dollar business, businesses. He, was, he went from a country boy who was a wannabe pro baseball player to a two comma club award winner. So let's dive in and find out all the ups and downs of Josh's journey and how he won that coveted two comma club award. Okay, so welcome Josh. I want to congratulate you on getting a two comma club award. Thank you. So it's an absolutely awesome achievement that you've done there. Now, I was looking you up on your socials, which is like what I like to do with my um, podcast Scary. guests. Yeah. And I found you've got about 19,000 followers over on your Facebook page on okay. Agent Leads. Yeah. Yep. You've got a YouTube channel. A few, yeah. I'm a little bit of a serial entrepreneur, so <laughs> yeah, yes. I think I think I found that because I found a few different things. Um, found you on LinkedIn. What about Instagram? Are you on Instagram? Uh, only to a, a a handful of people who uh, follow me, but no, I'm not very active there. No. So, what's your main what's your main social platforms that you like? Probably uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. For different reasons, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you've got, as you said, you've got a couple of different businesses. So do you want to tell us exactly what you do? Well, uh, it's subjective to time and season, but right now I'm launching a new brand. We can talk about that whenever you want to. Okay. Um, but historically, uh, I got into online business uh, in 2012 uh, started a, a, a fixed gear bicycle shop online. All right. Okay. I was drop shipping. Can I yeah, stop? I was can I stop you there a second? Yeah. So, cause we're going to go back there in a minute. I just, can we just, <laughs> what did you win the two comma club with? What business was that? Oh, uh, real estate marketing, uh, for real estate agents and brokers. All right. Yep. Okay. So what, so was that a training course or? Yeah, it, it started out as a done with you offer. Um, and it was, I was actually one of the early folks teaching uh, real estate agents how to use Facebook advertising to generate leads uh, back in 2015, 16. Right. Okay. And then, um, yeah, and it's evolved. We, we have a soft, a SaaS product now. There's been a lot of evolution there. Okay. So when you won the two comma club award, that's the product that you were selling, was it? That's right. Yes. Okay. And can you remember when was that? 2000. Well, we, we did a million dollars in 10 in the first 10 months. So that would have been 2017 when we accomplished the milestone. All oh, right. Okay. And can you remember, can you, can you recall that day? What were you doing? Do you remember were you watching it or did it just happen and you missed it or? No, I, we were, we were watching it. Um, and it was a big deal. It was a big deal to our team, no doubt. But, um, we, we didn't make a big deal out of it. We didn't have some, like, we didn't call time out and celebrate. We just, we kept <laughs> selling, which, you know, we're red blooded capitalists. So we just kept going. Okay. So was it a goal to hit the two comma club though, to get the award from Click Funnels? <sighs> Yeah, I think so. I, I think that was, um, you know, then it was the new big awesome thing. It still is an awesome thing. Um, but yeah, it was a goal. Absolutely. Okay. 
and so what happened then so you won so you won the you won the award you realized you've done the two comma club and then did you just carry on what you were doing or did your priorities change or what happened next no yeah we kept going um until the market uh, forced us to change our offer and to innovate. You know, you got to do that whenever you're in a small business environment. Uh, when competition moves into your market, you've got to evolve. And so we 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 did. We we're on, gosh, we're on version 5.0 probably of our business model. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's let's do a little rewind. Then I'm going to do a little rewind back to childhood. Okay. Great. Okay. Awesome. So, what did your childhood look like? Where did you grow up? I grew up in, out in the country in Northwest Alabama here in the States and um, mom and dad, my dad was in the United States Marine Corps, Vietnam veteran. My mom was a stay at home mom. I have a younger brother, five years younger than me, grew up playing baseball. Um, again, rural environment and can't complain at all about my upbringing whatsoever. And uh, yeah, played baseball growing up and had a great family life. Yeah. Did you go to college? I did. I played baseball in college. Uh, and I quickly learned that I was not as good as I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened after college? What was your first job then? I went in nonprofit. Uh, it's actually a big part of my story. I, I was in nonprofit for probably eight years and I was just a miserable wreck um, the entire period of time because I was really a salesman and an entrepreneur and I had convinced myself that I needed to be in a nonprofit environment um, for a, a very various reasons and uh, thought it was the noble task and calling and um, yeah I was miserable and then one day I broke out and found myself. So what were you, what were you doing in the nonprofit? I was doing um, basically event planning and operations for, right. for a couple of different foundations and um, helping them raise money. So I was, I was selling, I was selling sponsorships to events and stuff, but I, right. I wasn't doing it in a way that I, that was lucrative, obviously, to my personal income. All right. Okay. So what happened that made you, so did you leave that job to start your entrepreneurial journey? No, I, I actually went into corporate sales for one year. Okay. I was selling, uh, I was selling meeting and incentive travel to large corporations who, um, you know, you, 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 you're, maybe you're in the top performers group and uh, your company, maybe you work for a, a big bank or a big, uh, a big company that sends their sales force to, you know, a tropical island as a reward. I was selling those packages to the companies. Right. Okay. Yep. And, um, was miserable to, there too, because it was a corporate environment that I was in. I found myself in Okay. and I, again, I'm an entrepreneur and a uh, small business guy. So I, I, I didn't know it, but when the scales finally fell off my eyes, I realized why I was so miserable in nonprofit and corporate. And it was because I wanted to drive, create commerce you know, put, push my own flywheel and, and, and control my time and, and, and outcomes. And um, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I discovered it. So when you were there, did you get sales training? Did they give you sales training in that position? Not formal, not formal sales training, but the CEO and I were close actually. And he took me under his wing. And in, in the previous experience in nonprofit, I actually... Uh, worked a hand in hand with several terrestrial radio sales team, radio stations, okay. and uh, Clear Channel, Citadel Broadcasting, uh, a lot of the you know the historical traditional uh, radio uh, corporations. I was embedded in a lot of their sales teams because I was working with a, a syndicated radio station for some some events and or a radio show. And I learned a lot there in the field. So no formal sales training, uh, okay. but a lot of on the job training. Yeah. So what happened? Let's just rewind a little bit more. When you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, a major league baseball player. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I had no idea what kind of vocation I wanted to be in. And I thought I was going to be playing for the Atlanta Braves, you know, just, 
no questions. Okay, but then when you went to college, you decided it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, when I went to college, I realized that um, I'm no longer growing up in a small town where I happen to have uh, be the big fish in the little pond on the baseball field and uh, realized that there were a lot more talented people playing baseball than me. Right, okay. So you're at the sales job then. What happened there? Did you leave, get another job? What was what was next? While I, I, I call it my bridge job. Um, I started, I started investigating this online business thing, you know, um, I know online business didn't start in 2012 ish, uh, but it, it was still a burgeoning industry. And I started, you know, Shopify was getting on the map and Facebook advertising had just come out. Like it was the early days of Facebook ads. Um, and so, uh, I, opened a, a Shopify store and some internet marketer had a lead magnet that had 2000 drop shipping vendors on a spreadsheet and I downloaded it. And I basically closed my eyes and put my finger on the spreadsheet and wherever my finger landed was what I was going to try to sell online. Like I, <laughs> I, I had no loyalties, no passions. Like I was just, I was, I wanted out of the life that I was in. And my finger landed on fixed gear bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I created a Shopify store, bought an Amy Porterfield $500 Facebook advertising course. All right. She literally didn't have it gated. She, you just pay and it's like, uh, she just like embedded a video on a landing page. This is how early it was. There were no like Kajabis or yeah. ClickFunnels membership funnels. So I watched it, turned on Facebook ads and started selling fixed gear bicycles to hipsters in metro areas. <laughs> okay, and how did it go? It was good because I, uh, I, I had this storefront on Shopify and I had a pop-up, a modal pop-up. Uh, I think it was, gosh, I don't know, opt-in monster, something crazy, some plug-in. And it was like a 10% coupon if they download it. And so they did, and when they download it, they get on my MailChimp list. I was using MailChimp. MailChimp was like one of the only email software providers back then. And um, I was selling fixed gear bicycles via email off of Facebook ads pretty, pretty rapidly, but I didn't know what I was doing. You know, it was very much a side hustle, first foray into the online business. I didn't understand CAC. I didn't understand lifetime value. I didn't understand any of the metric side of business. Uh, and then pretty soon, actually, before I could burn it down, uh, the uh, the vendor that allowed me to wholesale and drop ship uh, discontinued their reseller program. And so I was just like, all right, I don't have a business anymore. And okay. it just kind of burned as a growth. So what did you do next? Well, I like to say that the phoenix from the ashes uh, that arose from my groovy, the name of the company was Groovy Bicycle. Um, okay which I've been shockingly pleased with that name, even though it sounds ridiculous when I say it out loud. <laughs> so Groovy Bicycle Burns Down and the Phoenix from the Ashes was Groovy Marketing. Right, okay. And Groovy Marketing was basically looking back, like if I'm having a Dr. Phil, Oprah, Winfrey moment, if I'm being in introspective, looking back, Groovy Marketing was me trying to get better at online business and have skills and knowledge. I was trying to acquire skills basically out in the open. I was trying to learn and articulate what I was learning about sales funnels, marketing, various copywriting, email marketing disciplines. And I started blogging and that, that blog uh, turned into a, a great little email list and uh, affiliate marketing business. All right, okay. So what were you doing? What affiliate marketing were you doing then? Well, it was either 2015. I can't remember when it exactly. It was either 15 or 16. I think it was 15 when ClickFunnels launched. And I had been teaching myself SEO and I had been blogging and I didn't know, you know, well, this, this, this crazy new SaaS company pops up with this 40% recurring 
affiliate pro, uh, recurring payment uh, program. And I thought, well, I'll just write a skyscraper blog post about ClickFunnels pricing model and uh, see how it goes. And the rest is history from there. Like I was outranking everybody on the planet, including ClickFunnels for the better part of two years. Um, and I was getting just droves of organic, high level, wholesome, like affiliate revenue that was just like adopting ClickFunnels and staying and paying me forever. So I won the dream car contest. I was like, All right, if you okay. look at the if you look at the dream car contest results, like it was like Ty Lopez, Josh Rhodes, and then Robert Kiyosaki in, line, in like 15, 16, 17. And I like, I was a nobody. Like no one knows who I, no one knows who I am still. And, <laughs> Did you um, want to, do you just want to tell our listeners what is the dream car contest? Cause they might not know what that is. Oh yeah. So ClickFunnels is one of their incentives for their affiliate base or for their affiliate body of, of marketers is you, yes, you earn commission by reselling ClickFunnels via your, your email list or your blog or your, your marketing funnels. But if you, if you, if you get over a hundred and then over 200, there's two different milestones. They'll pay for your car lease. You, you, they call it the dream car. So, you know, if you want a Maserati or if you want a BMW seven series, or if you want a Honda mini civic minivan, whatever your dream car is, they'll pay for it. And it was a really, it's a really good, awesome incentive. It's probably, it's the most lucrative affiliate program, I think on the internet. So, so what car um, did you that get? was a high honor. Do what? What car did you get? Uh, an, a, a BMW, a 740. It, um, love it. I still have it. I have a new version of it now. It, it's awesome. So how long, when you get the car, how does that work? How long do you keep it for? Um, they pay the lease uh, as long as you're an affiliate. Um, and as long as you have as many affiliates to qualify for the dream car, they'll keep, they keep paying. They, they, they don't pay the lease directly. They actually pay the, uh, they, they, pay, they pay dollar amounts. And so right. you just okay. obviously lease within that dollar amount. All right. Okay. So you're doing the affiliates. So what happens next? How do you jump from that to starting? Was it agent leads next? Well, yeah. So Groovy Marketing um, was that blog that was that was creating all. It was a six figure, all like not overnight, but like over twelve months. Like I was just like kind of messing around, and it worked. And so I kept blogging and let it. I just let it ride. It was literally passive income that I worked on for two hours a week. And then while doing that in 2016, summer of 2016. I started Agent Leads, and uh, over the next 10 months from that July, uh, let's see, then it would have been 2017, around March or April is when we hit the million dollar two comma club funnel uh, qualification. Again, but, all the while, Groovy Marketing is kind of running in the background. Um, so how did you jump from being an affiliate marketer to Agent Leads when Agent Leads is Helping estate agents, is it? It's, well, that's yes, what we call is. them in the UK. You call what do you realtors? Yes. yes, we yeah. yes. Um, how did you do that exactly job? How did you how did you do that? Um te uh, well, mechanically speaking, uh, it was simply a matter of uh, creating a phone call booking funnel and running Facebook ads. It was a very simple funnel. We were, uh, I was looking around at other industries and I saw other influencers um, who were booking calls with, or even in the real estate industry, they were booking calls. They just literally were launching a video ad on Facebook yep. that was compelling. Obviously they had the hook nailed and the message uh, nailed. Click on the link, click on the ad, go to a lander with a video, a big video on the, on the front, a hero video with one button under it uh saying book a call and we were we we basically found our baseline metrics on call bookings um pretty quickly like predictably for six years now we just know how much it costs to book a call with a real estate agent and so once you know those metrics you can just keep go you can kind of control your your pricing strategy and i think 
I, I'm, a, I'm of the school that pricing is one of your biggest weapons of leverage in a business. So we use that to our advantage. Okay. But how did you choose realtors? How did you, how did you decide oh, on that niche? Did you have any um, sort of background or anything in that area? Just as a real estate investor, you know, I had been flipping houses. Um, I had been doing renovations. I had, I had uh, a couple of rental properties at the time. And I had friends who were real estate agents and much like everyone else, I mean, there's a couple of million in North America alone, a couple pe million people licensed to be a real estate agent. So you can almost trip over a real estate agent, depending on what community you're in. So you've always interacted with them and they always are hungry for leads and sales. You know, it's a, it's a eat what you kill um, industry. And I had read, I believe I had read the Blue Ocean Theory, um, the book, uh, talking about blue oceans and red oceans. And obviously, uh, Russell Brunson talks about it uh, in Dot Com Secrets that I had read and, and just being the, attract, the whole attractive character, Epiphany Bridge model. And I was just like, well, I know I can. So I actually ran a few test campaigns on Facebook to see if I could generate my own buyers and sellers. If I, as if I were a real estate agent, I was okay. simulated a, yep. a quick campaign. And once I saw that I was getting people to opt in, I was like, okay, stop the presses. You know, I know so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so who have their license for real estate can't do what I just did on this simulated campaign. I'm going to go sell it. Um, and so I, I used a, a funnel model. My customer acquisition model what is something I borrowed from other parts of the industry and other industries. And then my offer obviously was unique. So, so with agent leads, you, were you getting the leads for other people or were you just showing them how to do it? Uh, at first I was showing them how to do it. We were a done with you high ticket offer. All right. Okay. Um, we had a multiple multiple pillar offer stack, um, and it was basically, hey, if you're tired of paying Zillow or Realtor.com or all these other lead vendors for leads, and you want to know how to be self-sustaining and do it yourself, then we can show you Facebook, who has way more users than all these other software companies that are selling leads. And that was kind of the USP. All right, okay, and that, and that's and you you said you got your two comma club from that when you launched within 10 months was it yeah and yeah. did you have a team then or was it still just you or what did you have yeah the first six months it was me and a business partner and we literally i ran the facebook ads i was mickey mouse out in front on the videos and the landers i was kind of the front man and then i also did sales calls along with my business partner and like I said, I, well, I may not have said this already. I, I think we probably, he and I did 4,000 sales calls a piece with real estate agents in the first six months. I mean, it was nuts. I, I can't remember the exact, it might've been 2,000. So let's just say 2,000 because I'm probably a sales guy exaggerating the number. But I know it was in the thousands. And I remember literally just being able to complete their sentences for them. Like you get to a point, which is a great business model, by the way, for your listeners. Like if they're trying to start out, you got to do the non-scalable before you do the scalable, in my opinion. You don't have to. Sometimes you can get lucky. But like if you really want to make sure that you're nailing your marketing, get on the phone and sell something to somebody. And so we did that. And about six months in, we hired uh, what I call the technician. Um, he is the person who wires up all the active campaigns and back ends of the funnels and the Zapiers and kind of helps the, all the, the, the new clients and customers get set up. So it was a done with you offer. So we, it's almost like training wheels. They had to do it themselves, but we would help them get started because there was a little bit of a technical barrier, uh, especially in 2016 um, and still is honestly. But then we, we went from a done with you to a done for you offer okay. uh, eventually. Yeah. So did you get rid of the done with you and just move to the full done for you? Well, a lot of competition moved into the market and started doing what we were doing. Okay. And so there came a moment because 
it, it's really a fascinating thing because it was so easy to acquire a lead and to book a call. Other people started sniffing it out and doing it as well. And so it's like you're, it's like you're digging a tunnel <laughs> into the ground and all of a sudden everyone realizes that they can dig a tunnel too. And before you know it, you're all on top of each other in the same cavern underground. And you're like, wait, where's all the prospects? They've all heard our pitch because y'all are pitching what we're pitching and we're pitching what y'all are pitching. And so you got to start iterating. You got to start changing your hook. You got to start making your offer sweeter and better. And the only thing better to a real estate agent is I'll do it for you. And that's what, that's why we started doing it. Okay. So how long are you still doing that now then? Yes. It's done for you. Yep. We're still doing that. And we layered on top of it, uh, our own, we built it for the ground up. We built our own CRM. All right. Okay. Yep. So who builds your funnel? So you've got crypto now as well, though, haven't you? So what's happening with that one? Is that a new, is that new business? Yeah, it's a new brand. Um, I really love cryptocurrency. I got into it in 2018, which is early for a lot of people and very late for others, uh, obviously, since Bitcoin kind of hit the, hit the world in 2009. But in 2018, I started investing and I started uh, acclimating myself to the whole idea. I was, I had, I had created the level of income, personal income to where I was like Robert Kiyosaki talks about in his books, the cash flow quadrants, you know, I had gone from employee to self-employed to business owner. And now I was wanting to move into the investor realm where I had been a real estate investor and the language from real estate investing really helped me understand cryptocurrency as a property and an asset. And I just became really passionate about it. And it really hit me in the last 12 to 18 months. Like I had bought and held Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some minor altcoins. And I'd done really well. I've, I've, I've had about a 2,300% return on my investment since 2018. But over the last 12 to 18 months, there's been tons of innovation in the industry and, and I just world-changing stuff. And I've just gotten really passionate about it. And I just found myself all day, every day, wanting to work on crypto more than anything else, investing, researching. I have a research assistant that helps me with crypto stuff. And um, I was just, and, and I had like over the, since when last November, whenever um, crypto hit their all-time highs and prices between that really catalyzed, like I probably had 35 to 45 people just in my sphere of influence go, Hey, you're into crypto. Can you help me? How do I get into crypto? Like what, what did it take? And I was like, hang on a second. This is market validation here. I think, I think I've got a populous uh, offer I can create. And so I, like I said, I grew up in the country in Alabama here and um, I don't know how it is in the UK, but where, uh, where I'm from, I talk different than most of the rest of the country. Right. And, <laughs> and, and, and we have, we have, you know, we had a way of life of, you know, family values and hospitality, you know, and I, I just thought, man, how cool would it be? Because when I go research crypto, I have to be really careful. I have to walk very carefully uh, around who I trust and who I don't trust and who, who, who's got good information and who's just trying to shill their next crypto and pump, you know, pump and dump scammy yeah. stuff. And I just, I was just like, man, what would it be like if we could create a platform, a community, an academy for people who want to safely but ambitiously invest in crypto. So I'm, I'm trying to merge um, Southern hospitality. That's where the y'all comes from. Uh, well, growing up, uh, you know, when people came to my house, my parents at the front door or my grandparents, the saying was, hey, y'all come on in. And that meant, hey, come in and stay a while and let's talk it all out like friends do. That's what that meant. And so like, how do how, can we do that with crypto? Why not? And so I was just like, okay, I'll start crypto y'all and let's do this. And so that's what we're doing now. So when did you, when did you officially start it? Uh, December, 2021. All right. So okay. We're still, 
yeah, we're still, I, I think you could technically say we're still in launch phase and trying to find ourselves. So are you, what are you doing with it? Is it a done, is it a course or is it a coaching program or? Yeah, uh, the primary, the flagship offer or product that anyone can join is called Crypto Y'all Academy. So it's an educational community is probably the best way to um, explain it. You know, we do the, the video modules, you know, it's for the beginner or the intermediate. It's for, it's for the crypto curious person is what it's for. Um, and they can log in and not talk to a soul and learn how to invest in crypto in a sophisticated way. Or they can join, do the, you know, watch the videos, invest on their own. And they can also get trade ideas for me and my team. Like, what am I, what is Josh investing in? What's his portfolio look like? What's he putting his money on? Uh, what's the new greatest, best thing they can, in, uh, we have a discord group, um, all kinds of goodies, obviously inside of the academy that we, we provide, but, um, you know, metaverse real estate courses, you know, like crypto, crypto real estate. I, I'm, I'm big in that right now. Um, stable coins, definance, all the sectors, basically NFTs. I know what people would want to know though. What funnel are you using for your crypto? <laughs> right now it's a list building funnel and a webinar funnel. You know, um, the, the primary way that, uh, the, or the thing that I'm focused on specifically is growing my email list, growing my contact list, and then I use a webinar funnel as the primary sales engine. All right. Okay. And are you running ads for this at the moment or are you doing, are you doing it organically? We, 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 we just started running ads, um, last week. All right. Okay. So where are you doing that? Cause uh, Facebook, have they stopped crypto ads? Well, whenever Facebook changed their name to meta, they loosened the reins big time. Uh, on the terms and services or terms and conditions. And so I have, we, we've had no problem getting our crypto ads approved. All right. Okay. Yeah. It's been great. <laughs> so is it just, are you doing YouTube ads as well or, are you, or is no. it just Facebook? No, fa Facebook and Instagram placements right now. That's it. And then, and, and then you're sending people into your group from there. Uh, it, into opt-in funnels yeah. mainly right now. Yeah. So is it a free download for something or is it like a lead magnet? Yep. yep. Tools and lead magnets. Yep. And then do they go, do you ask them to join the group then? Yeah. I, I put them into a, a, a nurture sequence and then from the nurture sequence, they're dumped into the general house list where they get invites to live webinars right now. All right. Um, okay. I, I haven't, I haven't moved into an evergreen webinar environment yet. Yeah. Okay. So, so how long do you think you'll do it live before you move into Evergreen? Well, a lot, a while. I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's naive to think that I've nailed it so far. I mean, we're doing really well on our webinar sales conversions. Don't get me wrong. Um, I've done a ton of webinars since 2016 and I, I feel like I know my way around some good webinar metrics, but, uh, it's a new offer. It's a new idea. It's a new brand. There's a lot of innovation and a lot of questions and I'm still trying to make sure that we're offering what everybody wants and what everybody needs, but so far it's selling like hotcakes. Um, and, I'm trying to make sure that we actually really nail it. So I don't know. I'll probably do the, I'll probably do the initial webinar. I've, I've done it about 12 times now. I'll probably do it another 20 or 30 times, no doubt. Yeah. Has there been any time on this journey that you've ever thought about giving up? Absolutely. <laughs> which, which, which journey and which bus stop? Like tell <laughs> Cat, I've, I've wanted to cash in the check plenty of times that's small business right there uh, so what made you not give up what was your driver to keep going um 
Well, it's always the same thing, you know, no matter how new or old the enterprise that you're involved in is, you know, like there's frustrating moments with crypto y'all already, you know, there's already turbulence and resistance. Uh, uh, agent leads, real estate, totally moments where you're just like, you know, when the competition flooded the market, that was a moment when you want to throw in the towel and like greener pastures are over there. Let's go do something else. There's always those moments. Um, but the the thing that drives me um is very i think very personal and that is growing up like i said i grew up like i told you i grew up in the country there were times where people would drive up in my driveway and i may or may not know who they are but they didn't have a lot of money i grew up one generation removed from extreme poverty like my grandmother had to make spaghetti sauce with ketchup most days. She couldn't afford produce or a, or a jar of tomato sauce. Like we, my dad came home from Vietnam and started a lumber sales business and made a, made more money than anybody in my, in my extended family. And there would be people drive up in our driveway out in the country who my dad was lending money to, to buy little league baseball jerseys and, groceries and to fix a broken water pipe and like just these these people who my dad was basically supporting spontaneously and then they would pay him back like it was just like a good old boy like handshake and a smile and I remember and looking back on that I just think that was so profound no one will ever know about it unless I tell them but um that created in me a desire to be generous and to be benevolent and charitable not because i'm noble or uh, i'm more righteous than anybody else but because i saw that in my dad and he reflected that and man i just want to create the scaled exponential version of what my dad did in my driveway so many times for people and i want to be b benevolent and i can't do that if i throw in the towel with my small businesses <laughs> okay so what Apart from winning two comma club, what's been your biggest achievement that you've achieved so far? In business? Yeah. Or in personal life? Oh, gosh. Um, well, like, I, 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 love, I love the way I was raised, but also it was, an, it was an oppressive environment that, you know, everyone tried to get out of I was the first person to graduate with a college degree in my entire line like it no no one had ever been to college much less anybody in my extended family and so that was a big deal um not that college necessarily or a college degree is the is the milestone but being able to quote unquote break out and go out into the world and um be able to either r rise or fall on my own volition it's probably my favorite accomplishment yeah Okay, cool. So focus for 2022 is crypto y'all. Yeah. Have you got plans to get to Comic Club with that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're pushing for it. 100%. So what's the plan? How's, how does that plan out? What's your plan to get there? It's very simple and not extravagant or sexy at all. <laughs> it is to do it is to do it, it is to run a webinar a, a webinar funnel to our core uh value ladder offer until we get there and my hope is that we do it obviously within the next 12 months i i'm not in a hurry to do it yeah i don't need to get there that fast uh, from a material standpoint but um momentum is a real thing and you want to get momentum as fast as you can in business Okay, cool. So I've got one last question for you. Okay. If you were going to be an animal for 24 hours, what would you be and why? <laughs> you know, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind with that question every time is I always want to say Wolverine, but I'm thinking about the comic book character, not the animal. And I always thought, man, the Wolverine is not as ferocious as the comic book character. So, uh, but you know, I already said it. So I guess I'd be a Wolverine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if anybody's interested in 
joining your crypto y'all how do they find you where do they need to go you know, I think the best thing they could do is just go to cryptoyall.co. It's not .com, .co. Um, remember, in marketing, it's not you don't have to be better, just different. <laughs> so we we went with .co, cryptoyall.co, and download my case study on um, how I went from zero and zero dollars in one of my portfolios to over two hundred and thirty-two thousand uh, with crypto, and uh, that'll be helpful for somebody. Okay, fabulous. So is that crypto? Y A L L dot C O dot yep. C O. Okay, awesome. I want to thank you so much for taking your time out of your day today to chat with us. It's been awesome to find out your story. Thank you so thank much. You.